Welcome back to Animation Analysis, and this time we're going to take a look at The Bad Guys by DreamWorks. This just popped up this morning, and I got to take a look at this because I love it already. The style is cool, and I love the characters that they're using. Also, super perfect timing. If you are wanting to animate something like this, anthropomorphic, you got a creature that looks like a human in terms of how they walk. There's a new rig out, so that's going to be super cute. Watch out for a review on my channel very soon. But perfect timing for that kind of style of animation. But, let's get into this here. I love this. Oh, sorry, there's so much to unpack here. Besides the style, that's cool. And I'm always, if you watch the trailer, this is about a heist to some degree. Love that. I love heist movies. I love the character designs. They're already super appealing. Love the cars. Love that world already. Like the exaggerated lights out. What is all this here on the side? But it's cool how big this is. Like sometimes movies, they feel almost kind of small in scope, depending on the budget, of course. But that's cool to see. Love that as a uh, immediate setup of that's the world. But I love the details. When you go into this here, not just animation, but I also love it because you have that thing of leaning, moving forward to then bring this over into a massive tilt. Why am I saying all this? Just because it's contrast opposing. And I'm, I'm just, my brain is all in terms of contrast and timing just because we're at the end of the semester for the school. And it's all about you know, the final grades and everything. But like that to me would just be such a great assignment. Like, that's in a way so cool because you don't have to animate. In a way, I always feel like when I do animation analysis clips, I talk about what not to animate. It's like I'm the laziest animator ever. But you don't have to animate the lower body and the legs. And it's kind of a cool setup of someone in a car. You can just easily add something moving by here or even in the foreground for speed. But you do have the contrast of posing of this into going forward into that you can even do like potentially like an overhang grab and turn but then you got that type of movement and because the car is moving you could have stuff in the back where either you have passengers if you want to add some complications or props this could be someone moving and you got some plants here that would be wiggling for some extra nice polished animation but you have that whole thing of coming closer and now you can really push the facial animation and again this is all kind of waist up-ish. I know the waist would be down here, but it's like a common thing in, in performance animation, if that's your animation chart framing type of thing, that a character is like this, either behind a table or that's the framing where it's usually waist up, but you don't show a really you know, huge amount of body mechanics. But that would be a new interesting way. So you can go even bigger with your, you know, however, maybe the in-betweens are arms up to then grab the wheel, maybe because something else like a truck goes by. But then you can go into here, and now you can focus on really nice close-up facial animation, which is also awesome here. Showing off a little extra movement here. And I love this, actually perfect timing, because I'll be dealing with a creature design that has a snout and longer shapes like this. So I'm looking at actually reference for exactly this. How do shapes deform and everything? That's great for me. But anyway, enough about me. What I love about this shot is actually not just this, which is cool. Great animation, I love all the head accents. I love this. Look what the snake is doing. Through all of this, the snake is not really bothered. It's just going, mm, I gotta open this. I'm not holding the whole thing here. <laughs> I love that little, huh, try this out, listening. It's great. We also see the change of style. That's also interesting. It's kind of your more traditional, somewhat-ish render. You got some interesting lines here. It's the outline for the eye. But then we get to this. And now you have that, just extra lines, so it gets a bit more drawn, I won't say cartoony, but a bit more graphic. But the cool thing is, is that it's just here and then, and it's kind of like here and then, here and there, I don't know, English. But I like that it's not, it's kind of like an in-between, where it doesn't go full on in terms of like extra stuff here. So it's kind of like the in-between style, but this is cool. Besides being an awesome pose, yeah, I love the look of this. The renders are great. Kaboom. It's a cool hold, too. Yeah, like that already. Like, what are we here? We are 240 frames into this. And I'm already super smitten. Great animation. Cool style. Interesting. Like, oh, okay. This is a style. And then that's a different style. I'm totally in. Very stylish overall. And then we get to see other characters. And the cool thing about that is, to me, contrast. If you are a poor soul who's in my classes... I always, not rant, but I always push, you know, timing and contrast. And the fun thing is that they're all going to move differently. Right? So you got this one, which is a super cute character. 
And the cool thing about spiders, and this is something else later on in the shot, is they can they can go up, you know, anywhere. So that spider is going to be on different surfaces. So imagine they could be here. That means that you're always going to have some form of asymmetry built in because of the surface slant, right? Whatever, you know, curvature or whatever it is versus, you know, maybe that character other that are on the flat surface. But that's cool. I like it. It's a cute, cute design. There's something about just the sharp black outlines here. It makes it very comic booky. That's like a weird generalized term here, but love the textures, but I love the treatment of the eyes. This guy's super cute. Come on. Oh, super cute. Yeah, it's great. But you'll see them later on when they all walk. Just did the, the contrast. I love the super stylized uh, teeth. But this would be a good example, as I always let students know. If you watch something like this, watch the take right there. So now you can go, okay, distracted or, you know, focused on the food and then realizing some things. Yep. What is this? One frame? One frame of visible squash into a boom, stretch that is also one frame extended and then back two frames, three frames, three frames of a settle there and then a little bit of extra here. Like to me, it would be that's cool. That's a fun take. Watch this. Choo. Just snappy enough. And then I would write that stuff down as a student, make a list and then redo this. Obviously, don't put it on a reel, but just practice like that. It's always interesting how everything they form is including the teeth. So a bit of a wiggle room in terms of like, what am I stretching? Like if you do stretch, you don't really want to stretch too much here. The cranium, that's your skull there. Now, you know, depending on the animal, it might be different. But if that would be a human, your stretch and squash would be mostly here. The squishy aspect of the skin and, you know, muscles and flesh and everything. And less of the skull. And it's not much. It's mostly through here. You know what I mean? But you can also decide, well, teeth are hard. I'm not going to stretch these too much, but they are here. Oh, it's cute. I like it. This is for me taking notes. Up to the next design. Again, awesome. I love the unevenness of all this. <laughs> I love what he's wearing. That's great. Let me just see. Because you don't really have fingers, right? So this is now the curling here. This way, in terms of what the finger is doing. And you can even here see, as it goes up, get a little bit of a squeeze in that quote-unquote finger. Oh, and then that's it. But even just that, watch that. You still feel it. And even here, this is what we, I love this because you have usually if that's the human and you got arms, right? You got your legs. I would tell students, well, you raise an arm that is going to influence the shoulder. It's going to move the shoulder up as well. Because of that, it's going to influence and rotate over the chest a little bit. That's going to influence and correct with the hips. But then if the body goes over, the head might counter to say stabilize. So there's a lot that goes into moving an arm. Now, this is a snake with one long arm, but still look at when that arm goes up, look at what the body is doing. Ready? Let's go back here and whoop, whoop. you still have an influence. It's not just this is cut. I'm not moving this because only this is moving. Imagine that whole tail is still influencing the rest. Plus you have head accents that's going to influence this as well. So it's almost like this fans out here this fans up back here so great what is this we're 420 frames in i'm already rambling about all the details it's such a great trailer all right so here's the thing that i want to talk about if you watch this besides being awesome right they're all in their elements <laughs> look at this guy swimming with little arms oh there's such great stuff here pretending there's the headpiece in the ear Love that little cute walk. It's about being a bigger character. Like, it's great contrast. And this is the one. So here you can see how the spider goes up. It's like a little subtle thing that the spider can go anywhere. You know, sticky on uh, any surface. It's great. I love it. And again, this guy here. Ah, so appealing. And you can see now the guy's walking. Again, this is like the contrast of movement. What is this? It's like fake arms with blow up hands and fingers. <laughs> I didn't even notice that the first time. It's great. It's awesome. Again, just the contrast of all those walks. All right, I'm going to save this in my walk folder. Love all this. I love stuff like that. You know, like the surfaces are not even. Everything is slightly, just slightly off. And you know, it's slightly organic. It's not super clean. I love the overlapping of all the screens. Let's go with the, the color change here for focus. It's great. Such an appealing character. 
love this. The super clean round shapes. So smitten. And you got the nice more graphic lines for the fur. I don't know. I love this. This is going to be one of those trailers where I say I love it. But I do. It's really nice. And I love these guys too. There's a, there's a comic book called um, Les Tuniques Bleues. Uh, I'm going to Google it and blend it in. Where like those those kind of roundish head shapes, especially the one guy, Blutch, he has that that you know the rounded shapes. Oh I'm blending it in probably. I'm Googling when I put that in. Which is, I don't know, super appealing to me. Maybe it's like a little dash of nostalgia. <laughs> Again, good reference for you for crazy shapes. Big moves. Yeah, I love all these character designs for the humans. And that's great reference. Like to go in and out of big shapes. <laughs> that over one frame but then it doesn't stop immediately right you're still gonna overshoot a little bit and then you can come back down into this and even the the jaw even though it pops into this it doesn't stop immediately you still have to ease in one or two frames what is this one frame so open ease in and then you still have like a squishy like you know it goes in and out it has like a, a, a contraction it goes squash and stretch just overshoot like whatever all the, the terms i'm going to throw out here to our principles and stuff but to me it's the organicness of something that doesn't stop on a dime you still have to have a little bit of overshoot and relaxation in the muscles so it's not this super poppy poppy look just because it wouldn't to me it wouldn't quite support the style given that you know the lighting the textures i think this is a great balance in terms of exaggeration right as you go up here with two frames but then you still continue one more stretch a little bit here and then come back Oh, that's a great example. Yeah, this goes also for me into my exaggerated animation folder. Same with these guys. Love those faces. Yeah, I'm really super smitten. Here's another good moment of reference of how quickly you can transition from this into that. It's a nice clean pose, nice hand pose, nice silhouette. I love this. Yeah, I love the, the cloth here. And you can see shaboom one frame drop into a fun run it's a great run yeah it's a great again very stylish we have the nice rim light more flatter color it's great it's so cool i love it this is for your texture people <laughs> slightly uh slightly painted you like all the the imperfections so great and this goes into my like subtle hand stuff. Look at the hand again. It doesn't just come in and stop. You can especially see it here in the cloth as well. That little bit of movement. Boop, boop. Just enough. Oh, I love these. It's like a blast door, like a Star Wars blast door. <laughs> but damn, man, this goes right into posing. That's something that I tell my students as well. Imagine that's your first shot or the first frame of your shot. That is a character pose. Even if this is it's almost default right but it has a slight tilt there slight offset there's just enough asymmetry to not be default and this for sure isn't default so i'm always telling the students you got to make sure that if you put in your rig into the scene right whatever that you pose is it's usually a t-pose like this you don't want to just bring down the arms and start animating pose out I highly recommend to pose out your first frame of your shot like this full polish to go this is the attitude that's what they that's that's the starting attitude and personality. And then you can continue your shot and there's maybe an arc where it changes. Or it's also for you to see, this is how appealing the character can be when you fully pose, pose it out. So you don't, you know, you're not stuck in the default pose. Like, yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work. I do this so often, that first frame fully posed, you go, this rig is gonna be cool. It's kind of like a reminder of what you could do. Lots of great details here. I'm gonna keep playing. Ooh, nice mechanics. Let's see, how long is the shot? And not long. It's great. This would be my my typical example of, okay, if someone asks, I want to do body mechanics. Just do this. You have a little bit of a traveling camera. You don't have to. He could easily start here. Yeah, it might just be a bit tight, but you could have him start here and end here. Might just be a bit edgy. I would still recommend just a pan, just to kind of follow. Same in the pan. The camera translates there, right? It's your, if you're on a, you know, on a, on a dolly, you can be on a track, be a tracking shot. There are many ways you can also just pan over with the rotation. 
But what I like about this is that you are starting on a walk with a step turn and then another step. And that's it, right? It's the beginning of the next one, but it's basically, let's go back here. Step, step. Yeah, it's great. And within that, you have a 180 turn. That's already complicated. But all of this is in service of this character wants to steal this and is stealing it. I love how she somewhat feels it. She goes, wait, what? What happened? That little nice clean hand pose. Like, wait a minute. And that's it. And I love that for him. It's like he got that focus of yes. Leaning in. The smile. I want to grab this. Everything goes to this. Grabs it. And even at the end, you have that little, oh, I like this. Focus on that. It just You go from like one attitude to the next. Like this shot is packed. Packed with stuff. It's not long. It's still complicated to do. Like that's what I would recommend to a student. I'm not saying this is easy to do. Again, it's complicated. Bunch of stuff in there. But it doesn't have to be long. Man, this goes also into my body mechanics folder. The whole trailer goes into my folder. <laughs> that's your... Uh, the rock promotional photo where you always adjust one of the sleeves. <laughs> oh, it's great stuff too in terms of finger details. Could be a pain to animate all this here, huh? Just taking this out. She slips. Whoa, that's your weight assignment right there. It's also great in terms of reveal. I know I'm kind of stating the obvious here, but for you, again, as a student, for me, this is always like this is for students as an idea springboard. What if you want to do facial animation, and body mechanics. This could be your sequence. You would start here. You kind of have a fun, big, exaggerated take, which then reveals someone else, contrast, different expression. But then you have the pull, and it change into a big expression, right? You already have kind of the weight in terms of a pull. And then you have this as a reveal, and now you can go full body, full silhouette. I think that's cool. Also need to see. It's kind of like the extent of the style in terms of it's almost like a smear motion blur that's not it's not multiples and it's not crazy but it just has enough stylization there it's really nice but yeah this is your really nice broad weight assignment pull silhouette shots great oh that's such a great walk look at this this is where you want to go frame by frame anticipates and then it was that so great like this is well animated obviously but look at this how long is this shot Let's go back and here. So much fun. I would probably add another second if this was a student shot, just to you can finish and show it a settle. Like so your weight comes to a stop. Unless you want to cut and then do it in here. I got on the close-up shot, but again, not long. It's great because it's asymmetrical, right? You got your steps here, so you're gonna have asymmetry in here because you're forced to do it because of that elevation change. Fun mechanics because you're going down. Again, you can have weight. She could even be always like this, right? Where instead of pulling up here, it's almost like you can do leaning over, pulls back, and that's when he already starts running. And then you can see that she would come back to <clears throat> the fall. And he's already down there to then hold her and push her back so she doesn't fall. This could be a nice tweak of the shot in terms of a weight assignment for you know any kind of students or for myself I wanna no I wanna animate this then I'm gonna scrub here a little bit this goes into the setup of the shot I love this though someone this is the bad guy right this is the trailer the bad guys he was told what a good guy and now the instinct of the tail wag it's cute that's actually a great example just before when I said this when the arm goes up right influence the shoulder chest a little bit of the hips and the head same thing here got the tail that comes out tail swings over well it's gonna pull the hips over it's a perfect example of body mechanics and it won't just be the hips because if the hips move it's gonna affect the chest and you can see how much the chest moves here even though he rotates up to go wait a minute that's like a, a rotate up in terms of realizing something there's still an arc this way it's still pelvis chest head in terms of how much it's being pulled over by the tail and you got the dangling arm, so now they're just kind of the pendulum swinging back and forth. I think that would be a great example for students to look at in terms of body mechanics, like one body part affecting the rest. 
And then of course we got a really nice, fun, snappy one frame for the head, popping into this pose to that nice asymmetry, super clean silhouette. Oh, that's great too. Trying to grab the tail. Oh, so many great poses there. Come on. Okay, so this is this is a longer piece, but still you can start with a fun pose. Again, there's just enough asymmetry, right? Just enough. Even if just a hat gives you some offset there. Then you have mechanics here for fun, for your entertainment value. And then you end with a complicated shot where you go, whoa, that was cool. Cut! And the end of your reel. <laughs> so good. So good. What is this guy doing? I mostly watched him. <laughs> nice. Oh, man, this would be something I would love to animate. This. I know, it's a silly, but I love it. I love props. It's great. So you can see that this... The impact here of that super fast knife. Some nice little shapes there. It's great with all of this moving. It's got big chubby cheeks. Look at this. Look at the cheeks. All of this is moving. It's great. I oh, love it. That's fun. So many great moments here. Even this here. Even that has a slight lean over. I'm just, I'm just noticing just the asymmetry, right? Different lean, overall body lean, elbow higher here. Just for any students, because that's, that's unfortunately something I always have to torture them. Like whenever they're done with the animation, you gotta say, Argh! push it a little bit, bring in some asymmetry, you make it a bit, a bit more organic and less default Maya rig. You know, that's that's too vertical, too horizontal. Just give it some an organic asymmetry feel to it. I say this, and this is fairly symmetrical. Besides this, it's a little change in here. It's a little bit lower than here. It's a little bit subtle. Great, look at that. That's your your character posing right there. It's a great pose. Details, details. That's the lair. Cute. Man, this reminds me of. Is it Celeste and and Clementine? What is this? I'll Google it afterwards and try to bring it in. This reminds me of another character. So cute though. Super appealing. <laughs> they didn't see these guys. Look at that. The question is why? Are they not used to animals walking around? Why is he freaking out? Still super appealing. Yeah, love all these designs. Love all this, the cloths, great costume. This would be your moment as a student. You go, okay, you got a take. Be like, huh? Then I would write down how many frames. Oh, nice. You got your closing of the eye with a little bit of a move down and then back up. Ah, it cuts out. I would love to see more of the eyebrows. But that's what I would do. I would write that stuff down. That's what I say in every anim uh, animation analysis. But it's true though so appealing that goes back into the big big shapes especially again asymmetry like as you move over you can bring that whole thing over there by thing i mean the mouth shape the mouth it's great too i love the knot here that would be a little squash and stretch on the steps here boing even here though even though it's twinned there's still a change my students are probably going, yeah, but you would say don't twin. I know, I know. Like a lot of things that I say in terms of twinning and stuff, you still see it in movies. I think she has somewhere, maybe a past I already forgot, but she has a moment where she has a twinning pose. But then how she gets out of it is fun. I'll just keep playing here since this will be like a 50 hour analysis. I'm only halfway through. So great though. Oh, again, that's your different walk as before, right? But now they're all grumpy. They've been arrested. So that's your, your. Uh, I, I gotta go back. Hold on. Where was it? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. That's when I lose all my viewership here. Look at that. That's your walk right there. Certain attitude, and then that's your walk right there. Same characters, but different attitude. And it's great. Cute costumes. Come on. Let's go forward a bit. It's awesome. Ah, here. There you go. That's what I was saying here. So you have this. Goes up. There's still asymmetry, right? And the height still offset. But goes fa pa Fairly symmetrical, right? Pretty much. So that's maybe, you know, where the head is positioned. But, but, when she's done, love this. That goes down first. Definitely an offset. Now watch this in real time. Huh? Shalong. It's cute. I love it. Yeah, that's great. And this goes back into big arm move look at how it influences the rest of the body 
goes up, the body goes down a bit, all that influences the rest here, even the tail. So much to learn, holy moly. Look at those rump poses. Love it. Yeah, so great. <laughs> More. That's your classic cartoony where the guy's leaning back. I love it. Hand forward. Ah, these are great. Yeah, I love, love, love those eyes. Just having that, that outline all the time, the black outline there is so cute. Great expressions. Love the squishiness of pushing that in here. So cute. Like it's stylish and cool and at the same time super cute. Look at that. That is nice. <laughs> Get your arc directed spit. Back into awesome facial shapes. Man, that's a painful shot. Whoever has to do this, I feel for you. It's a great pose there. <gasps> I love how she just turns. <gasps> you gotta keep that contrast everywhere. I like that she looks at him. So much awesome stuff in here. I just keep going. Yeah, lots of really fun poses. Nice, nice pose as well. She's so super appealing. Great, love this here. I want to go see this frame by frame. This, is this animated? Okay, so I want to see, is this a map painting? Or is this animated? Is it an animated map painting? I don't know, I see rotation there. Are these individually placed rigs or is it a map painting with animated meshes? I don't know. I don't know, but I feel bad if that's an individual. <laughs> these are all separate rigs. That's what I wanted to look at. I wanted to see how this grabs that. It's cute. The reaction on them. Watch this. Yeah, it's super cute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Once you play this in real time, you can see all the stuff moving. Oh, they all react at the end. I feel so bad. Whoever did this, I feel for you. It's a lot of work. That's cool too. This would be again for a bottom mechanic shot where you're implying stairs, but you're not showing them. You don't have to do the footfall, but you can show in the rhythm of this, watch her. Right? We get it that there are a couple steps and then she actually walks straight. So there are only a few steps, but it's still, it's nice in terms of contrast where she goes lower. It's almost like after she said it, because she goes lower, the audience can go back up to him. Nah, she doesn't exit, but she could go out here, leaving us with this. So you have a nice little change of focus of character, implied steps and weight. I guess this is the, the, one of the themes is cheat and not showing things. Animating less, I guess I'm all about animating less. It's great though. Nice silhouette here. Color silhouette, front of the, the dark from the light. Yeah, so much great stuff here. These are always great shots for like quick takes and, and facial shapes there. Oh, love this. Love all that. I love the mechanics, the dynamic mechanics of the, well, that too, but of that car, the little jitter there. To this. Oh, we can see the eyes at the end. Look at this. Yeah, super cool. Love all this. The look and design is great. Love this here. Again. Such great shapes. It's so great. That's cute too. Oh yeah, when he when he eats up all the other ones. Spoiler. Love this though. How he gets into this. Watch them. The giddiness of the up and down. So great. Again, I guess asymmetry again is the thing. You know? Just that, how the arm is over and here just the little the pause there and the fingers. So great. Love this here. <laughs> I love his excitement there. Again, what a pain. I wonder how they did that. So cute, though. Look at those faces. That's great, too, though. Look at how long this shot is. Because that's very short. I'll make it longer for a student. But what I like about this is the, the squishiness. That's a, it's a challenge to push your character against whatever, a, do a door, a wall, whatever it is, right? And then talking. So you still want to feel the contact that this doesn't move too much despite this moving, right? So this arm is going to influence everything, but you do have pressure where this section is not going to move too much. I think that would be a really fun challenge for a shot. This is for me again, reference in terms of how much stuff is moving here for your extremes. It's great. It goes into my folder. But yeah, that's a really interesting challenge for a shot. <laughs> He's drunk from eating all this. 
the unicorn just go up? Yeah. <laughs> he kind of blows it up like hair. Oh, great pose, too. Look at that. <laughs> Love how this guy peeks in. Yeah, so great. So many great moments in this trailer. Love it. Crazy town. A lot of crazy car shot. So cool, though. <laughs> Even then, at the end, do we see them? Felt like it. <laughs> nice. That's great. I'm just looking at like old school knobs. I mean, this would be your shot if you're starting out, right? This would be a nice quick shot. You got the compression on the fingers. See that? Even at the end, a bit of a longer squeeze because he just pulls that up, but then still has to hold on to it because of whatever, turn, whatever it is. And this could be your shot, right? If you start out a company, shaboom, it's short. Someone's got to do it. So well done. Nice. Nice poses there. Definitely going into more graphic style here. Nice. Whoa, we're going from land, bam, to run. That's pretty cool. That's something I need to practice. Some really push timing changes there. So great, though. Look at these. I, I love, love, love those designs. That art of book is going to be on my list. For sure. And that's the end, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is fun shapes. Yeah, it's great. Holy moly. What a bad guys. When is this coming out? In April. All right. In four to five months. Yeah, super cool. I love it. Very, very cool. Well, that concludes it. That's my half hour <laughs> analysis slash reaction, whatever you want to call this. But hopefully helpful to students. I always try to pick out some shots where eh, that would be like a cool, shorter shot to animate. Because the thing is, students, this is something that I was ranting about before, actually, in my previous clip, where you gotta, you gotta get to put in 110% and blah, 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 blah. But I think this is a great example of you can take on shorter shots, right? Could be even something like this. This could be an interesting assignment of mechanics. Something's being pulled and then affects the rig, and the rig is holding other things, and they have some overlap and influence, right? But you could do it like this, where there's just, it just it's fun to look at and hopefully fun to animate. So you can still break down a shot into smaller assignments like this, right? You don't want to deal too much with the popping of knees, contact of feet. So you just cut it off here and imply that there are steps so that there's weight. And I think that can still make for a fun shot. I would still highly recommend to pretty much every student, keep your shots short. This doesn't have to be... She comes out of here, walks up, does a 180 turn, gestures, walks down, and he does like a somersault back. You know, like a 20-second crazy shot. Keep it short. You can still put in all the mechanics that are needed. Let's go forward. Here. Even something like this, like a head turn like that. Could still be fun having other characters in there. I mean, like you can still break down a shot into shorter pieces to still learn the mechanics and the principles. So it's still fun for you, but not overwhelming. Like this would be a fun like weight shift almost, right? He starts here, goes into that, and that's it. You just do this. But in this, you still have the root go up and the relaxation of going down and then up again. You still have the weight of this and the compression in that. You can still focus on a nice leading pose and the line pointing to whatever you're going to have here. And you can still have a little bit of, like, yeah, well, even if you want to do some lip sync in there. <laughs> I missed that. I love this. So great. Clean, all nice with the highlight there. Yeah, it's just, there's so much you can you can get out of trailers, because usually trailers are, I don't say usually, but a lot of times trailer shots are cut shorter. You know, a lot of these might be longer. But even this, like I said before, that is such a great example of body mechanics. And it's still fun to watch. And you can make this a lot shorter too. This could also end here, right? What if it's just this, this, cut. It's not overwhelming. It's super fun to do. You still learn a bunch of mechanics. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. I think, as always, trailers are just great examples for students. And hopefully, as I'm going through here like a nerd, uh, hopefully it's, it's a, as I say, a springboard of ideas. I hope this is helpful. I love this trailer. Definitely looking forward to it. And let me stop rambling. And I say thank you for watching. If you're watching till the very end, it's a longer clip as always. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go forward to the title dun, 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 the bad guys all right hopefully see you in my next clip